Okay, we've just been working through our Sherry Shuttles problems, problem 13A from our accounting workbook, and now we are at the time where we are going to compute some ratios. So we've prepared an income statement already, statement of changes in equity, and now balance sheet. And the question, we've solved part A, the income statement, B, statement of changes in equity, and C, the balance sheet. And now the question is saying, hey, compute these three ratios, the current ratio, the debt ratio, and the equity ratio. What are ratios? Well, they're just quick little calculations you can do when you're looking at a company at a glance and you can get some useful information from them. So the first one, the current ratio, let me just write it out down here. Current ratio tells us, well, the, the formula is current assets over current liabilities. What does that tell us? It tells us, can the company pay its bills? Does it have enough current assets, short-term assets, to pay off to cover its short-term debts? Literally, it's on top here. It's covering it. Does it have enough money to pay its short-term bills? So let's calculate it for our company, and I'll kind of comment on it. The current assets, right here, 6,500, the current liability is right there, 3,800. So we'll calculate a number. This is not a percentage, it's just a number. 65, oops, let's just do it this way. 6,500 divided by 3,800, 1.71. Again, we're not going to write a dollar sign or a percentage here. That's just the number. So the rule of thumb here is anything above 1.5 is considered to be safe. Anything one under 1.5 is considered to be riskier. And if you think about it, like if you're below 1, it means you don't have enough money to pay your bills. Some bigger companies, these rules go out the window. But I think if you were looking at just your, your family business or a typical smaller business, I think a good rule of thumb is you want to be above 1.5 here if you want to be considered safe. Otherwise, you're a liquidity risk. You're at risk of running out of money. You're at risk of not being able to pay the bills. So that's our current ratio. Bigger is safer, and in an intro accounting class, safer is better. Again, I've seen real companies where uh, the shareholders don't want the current ratio to be as high. They're saying, yeah, we have too much cash. You should either invest long term or pay dividends, but you shouldn't keep so much cash. And obviously, having more cash will make your current ratio higher. So I've seen shareholders argue for a lower current ratio. In our class, we'll always advocate that bigger is safer and therefore better. Um, okay, let's look at the debt ratio uh, the debt ratio is computed as total liabilities divided by total assets so for our company, the total liabilities, not the current liabilities now, the total liabilities is 48,800. The total assets, 136,5. So crunching the number here, 48,800 divided by 136,500, we get 0 0.3575. Now we do want to state this one as a percentage, 35.75%. What does this say? It says if the company, you know, sold off the company today, you paid off all the debts, you took the rest of the money for yourself, 35% of those assets have to go to pay the debts, 36% almost. Uh, meaning, and that gets us to the equity ratio, there are weird things happening and popping up on my computer right now. Um, uh, the formula here is total shareholders equity divided by total assets. Now, I don't actually need to calculate this. I can say, okay, if the debt ratio is 35%, I don't even need a formula. I can just say, okay, this has got to be the rest to get to 100%. This has to be 
64.25%, right? And that 35 plus 64, it adds up to 100. Um, let's do the formula anyway. Our total shareholders equity here was Oh, not 136. What was it? It was 87 there. 87,700. We're going to divide by 136,500. And let's compute it. 87,7 divided by 136,5. And we get 0.64249, so 0.6425. And that converts, of course, to 64.25%. So what does this say? Well, again, if I took the company, sold all the assets, paid all the debts, 64% of the money afterwards would land in my shareholder's pocket. 36% would go to the debt holders. 35.75% would go to the debt holders. 64% would go to the shareholders. So for the debt ratio, bigger is thought of as riskier. And in our class, riskier is worse. So you want to be lower in terms of a debt ratio. You want to be higher in terms of an equity ratio. All else kept equal. Again, this isn't the case for all companies. Some companies, it's very sensible to borrow and even borrow more and uh, use what's called leverage. But in our class, just think of a uh, debt ratio as bigger means riskier and risk is negative in, in our view. Again, uh, different uh, companies and different finance people may disagree with that statement. But in a basic accounting class, I think that's fair to say. Okay, so that's it. We've solved the problem. Now, uh, you can skip ahead if you don't want a sort of personal story. But I uh, I took this class as a student. And, and I, I got to give a bit of backstory here. In fact, I'm going to drink a drink of water before I it's a very personal story. So I, I um, from when I was a little boy, I always wanted to be an accountant. And I, I look back and I have these like yearbooks, not even yearbooks. My mom would like take a picture from the year and then paste it to a page. And on that page, there would be a survey like, Tony, what's your favorite food? And what's your, who are your best friends? And one of the things, you know, you ask a little kid is like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, accountant from a very young age, from when I was like four years old, accountant, accountant, accountant. And, you know, I didn't know what an accountant was. How could you know? But I, I knew I liked numbers and I liked money. And in reality, somebody that really likes numbers and math and money should get into finance. But I, I just had it in my mind, accountant, accountant, accountant. So I went through high school, never took an accounting class, but I tell all my friends and, you know, in the yearbook, what do you want to be? Accountant, 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 accountant. Got through first year of university, no accounting classes in first year. So, and I had done well in school, mostly B's and A's. And uh, I get into second year of university and I'm here. I'm finally in my accounting class. And I tried so hard in this class. I worked so hard. I studied so hard. And most of my other classes, I didn't even care. I was lazy and I still did okay. This class, I was working my butt off and like, because, you know, this is my life. I'm going to be an accountant. I've said this for the last 20 years. I'm going to be an accountant. And here I am in accounting class. So I get to the first midterm exam. And on that midterm exam was a financial statement question just like this one. Give me an income statement, statement of changes in equity, and a balance sheet. And I ask my students to do this on my exams all the time. Income statement, statement of changes in equity, and a balance sheet. So anyway, I'm working away. I do the income statement. I go, okay, great. Do the statement of changes in equity. Seems like things are going well. Do the balance sheet. Get to the bottom of the balance sheet. And what happens? Well, my balance sheet did not balance. And I did, I made a mistake. And th this is the reason I'm telling you the story is because I don't want you to make the same mistake I made. I said, oh, geez, I know these two numbers have to match. Assets has to equals liabilities plus shareholders equity. If there's one thing I know, that must be true. And for my question, it's false. Clearly, I did something wrong and I erased the whole thing. And I started over and I work through and I get to the bottom of my balance sheet. And guess what? The exact same number and by the way you know this question takes it took us you know 45 minutes in these videos but it probably takes 20 minutes in real life to do like even if you're going quickly and so you know i've i've just wasted 20 minutes i got to the bottom and i see the clock's ticking i have a wrong answer i'm starting to sweat i start working on some other problem i start to cry in the middle of the test i just i broke down and uh 
you know, so I, I didn't finish the test. I never finished the problem. I erased it again. I start again. I run out of time. It's kind of half there and half gone. And I'm, I'm just weeping in my seat like, oh, my God, you know, I've never failed the test before. I, I know I'm failing as I'm doing it. And um, I, I just hand it in. I say, prof, like, uh, look, I don't know what happened. This was a disaster. What can we do here? And she just, to her credit, said, listen, you just have to do better on future tests. Like, uh, you know, you, this, this exam happened and it counts and you'll have to do better going forward. And so my advice to students, a couple of things. One. If you miss something and it causes your balance sheet to go out of balance, just move on. Don't get hung up on that. Like this type of question is worth like double digit marks. Let's say 12 marks for me. Well, you'll probably, you might get an 11 or a 10 out of 12 if you have most of the stuff right, right? You can still get an A plus level grade on the problem and still have it not bounce. So don't lose your mind. Don't erase everything for sure. The other bit of feedback here is, I got like 28% on that test, okay? And this was like such an important subject to me and to get 28% really hurt. But I passed the course. I, I didn't get a great grade. I think I got a C plus overall, but I had to work my butt off to pull it up to a C plus. And I went on to be a CPA. I went on to be a professional accountant. And now I'm an accounting professor, having got below 30% on the first accounting exam of my life. So. I have students all the time in my class that fail a test and it's not the end of the world. And in fact, it's not even the end of the world if you fail a course, but really it's not the end of the world if you fail a test. You can put it together, you can put yourself together and you can improve. And I'm, I'm living proof of that because I bombed my first accounting exam ever. So uh, hopefully that's positive feedback. Hopefully that's helpful to you and uh, good luck in your studies. Now. I appreciate you watching these videos and I hope they're helpful. And I, I made this little thing. Uh, this is a new thing to me, self-promotion. But, you know, uh, here I am. If you're watching this on YouTube and you made it all the way to the end and you made it through my ridiculous story, I hope you'll take the time to like and or subscribe uh, and share with your friends. Let them know that there's these videos are useful to you. Again, uh, it really helps uh, to have the algorithm kind of know that my videos are good and know that they're worthwhile. So I hope these videos were worthwhile to you. And if so, please don't be shy about liking and subscribing to them. All right. Have a great day, everybody. And stay tuned for our next video. Bye for now.